No one really uses Clydeser competitively. It's got some horrible stats except for a big 120 special attack, and you're thinking, man, this lobster stinks. But its saving grace comes from its ability Mega Launcher. This boosts any pulse moves by 50%. That means that Stab Water Pulse now hits way harder than you'd expect, along with some great move pull options in things like Dragon Pulse boosted by Terra Dragon, Aura Sphere, Flash Cannon, and even Dark Pulse. The lobster is generally overlooked, but it's all fun in games until it mega launches some pulses to your face. Alright, look, all I'm saying is we're lucky that they made clients are slow, because if this thing was fast, it would absolutely be coming for our wives and children, and it would be a problem. But with a little bit of elbow grease, we can turn this zero usage fella into an absolute monster. And if you're into that kind of thing, you should probably hit that subscribe button because most of the people watching are not, and you should probably just double check. With that, let's go ahead and jump into the match. All right, so my opponent is gonna go ahead and lead off with the Glamora, as I decide to lead off with the Quagsire. Now, I've never seen a Glamora lead before, so I have absolutely no idea what this thing's gonna do. Psych, so I do not really want my Sticky Web or my Stealth Rock to be kind of mortal spinned away, so I decide to just go ahead and go for a Surf here. Obviously, I don't want to hit it with an Earthquake on the physical side to get the Toxic Debris up. While I do have Gengar to switch in and soak him up anyway, I figure it's both going to be a two-hit KO as this thing's always going to be a Focus Ash lead. And I can just go ahead and throw some water at him and just dampen him up a little bit, and then another one is in range to kill. So they set up the Stealth Rock. I figure they probably switch out here, just kind of seeing that another Surf kills. So I can take advantage of that by going ahead and setting up the Stealth Rock of my own here. So they're going to go ahead and twirl out the Slow King. And this thing comes in, arms behind his back, looking pretty smug, knowing that this thing is a pretty defensive problem for me. I, I don't have a whole lot that wants to deal with it, but one way that I can deal with it is by slow and excruciating death via Toxic. So I'm just going to go for that Toxic here. I obviously run the threat of being potentially Water Absorbed. I know they can't serve me. And they actually just end up going for the future site. So with that toxic up, it's gonna make my life a whole lot easier and you know, slowly whittling this thing down. And this thing obviously just being a pivot with the regenerator, always coming in with more health is just gonna be nice to have the poison. So I decide Quagsire can't really do a whole lot, but also is kind of nice to keep healthy. So I decide to switch into the Tinkaton with the threat of you know the future site kind of looming. I figure the big hammer, he doesn't really care. Too much about taking that. So I come in ready to bash some people's teeth in and then steal it for some money for the Tooth Fairy. As they actually just end up going for the Ice Beam, probably expecting something like the Scyther to come in. So the Tinkaton is in here relatively nicely. I can go for a knockoff, which is going to kind of reveal what they're working with on that set, but also give your boy some pretty decent chip, which is always nice. So they actually end up switching into the Sligu. You got the Metal Boy, and if you're wondering why they're working with this, it's because Hisuian Sligu has very similar defenses to its evolved form Hisuian Gudra, but it also has the benefit of being able to run the Eviolite item, which gives you a 50% boost uh, to both of its defenses, and this thing can be incredibly difficult to kill. So, the knockoff getting rid of that Eviolite is, is exactly what we're looking for. We're gonna make our lives, again, a whole lot easier versus this little fella. And with that, I decided to switch into the Galvantula. I feel like this is a pretty good opportunity, knowing I can take hits from this thing, to be able to get up my Sticky Web. And that's gonna help out a lot of the mons in the back, but most importantly, the Clydeser, who needs to be faster than stuff to be nice. So, I just decided to go for that Sticky Web here. It turns out they're actually gonna go ahead and stay in and just go for a Dragon Pulse, which I actually just barely live, because Galvantula is the damn goat. And before I go down, I just decide to go for a Thunder. Even, you know, without that Eviolite, this fella still can feel like it's a little bit invincible. So I get some chip there with the Thunder as I do go down. And that is kind of what I'm looking for as I wanted a nice little free opportunity to bring in the big meaty claw. We come in and the Clawitzer is absolutely ready for action out here. The main thing is we have the Sticky Web up and the claw is cocked and loaded with all sorts of shenanigans here. So... I just decided to go for the Aura Sphere. I do obviously have the fighting coverage here. And we just throw a nice little ball of fist right at his face. And that is going to take care of the weird friggin' metal snail guy. So with the Sligu out of the way, now we get to see what they want to deal with in, in terms of the claw. So they actually decide to go into the Ninetales, which is kind of what I was hoping for. I imagine they go into Ninetales here, um, expecting me to probably you know not have any coverage, fearing things like a freeze dry and then get out of here. But upon touching the ground, it does in fact hit the Sticky Web. Drops its speed one stage, and I have the coverage with the Flash Cannon. I am faster, and a Flash Cannon with the boost is easily enough to take care of the Alolan Ninetales, which is amazing because that thing could have been a freaking menace. 
and it's super clutch running timid or plus speed nature at least on the Kleitzer does outspeed uh, a max speed along the nine tails with the sticky web up so that is really clutch and as now they decide to go into the Sinistrum, this is another fellow that generally can at least take an attack. It comes in, takes the Sticky Web, and I'm looking at this matchup thinking there is one way that I can actually grab a kill here. And that is to go full Lobster Dragon on his ass. I'm going to go for the Terra Dragon because I want the Stab Boost on a Dragon Pulse that is boosted by Mega Launcher. And we are looking pretty damn menacing over here. Now, depending on how this thing is built, I should be able to grab a kill here, especially with that little chip from the Stealth Rock. I obviously do outspeed, and we're just going to go ahead and pulse him with the big old claw in a dragon fashion. And that does take care of the Sinistra. Surely, they didn't expect the uh, stab to come through and allow that to kill. With that Life Orb chip, we are in business out here. The Kleitzer is honestly on an absolute tear. So... Now they decide to go into the Slow King, and I imagine this thing is probably going to be, you know, especially defensive and it can take an attack. This is when a situation where having Dark Pulse would actually be kind of hilarious. It's like, oh, I have an answer for literally everything you got, but I don't have the Dark Pulse. And honestly, the Kleitzer in the back still can be pretty valuable, at least in being able to outspeed things like the, uh, the Glamora and stuff like that. So I decided to switch, and I figure I'm going to go into Scyther here. We didn't see Flamethrower versus the Tinkaton earlier. But they're actually just going to go ahead and bust it out now. Um, as Scyther comes in, I can at least take one of them. And now I'm looking at this matchup thinking, okay, they have three Mons left. One of them being Slow King. They have a Glamora along with a Staraptor in the back. If I'm them, I probably switch into the Staraptor here, fearing the Bug Bite. So I decided to predict that and go for the Dual Wing Beat. It turns out not only do they stay in, but also I miss, which is wildly unfortunate. And now an Ice Beam just kills the Scyther. So the overprediction comes back to bug bite me right in the ass, and now I have to figure out a way kind of around this slow king, but also the threat of the star after is a pretty big problem, just mainly because that thing's most likely choice scarf, it does not get affected by the sticky web, and I just decided to go into the Gengar here. Now, one thing about this Gengar is it, it's a little different. This is actually a physical attacking Gengar. And as I want to click the Poltergeist, if they go into Star Raptor here, I'm actually in really big trouble. So I just decided to click the Gunk Shot regardless. A Choice Band Stab Gunk Shot, it looks like it might still grab a kill anyway. So I'm going gunking today, boys. And it turns out they're actually going to go ahead and bust out the Terra. They're going to go Terra Dragon of their own. They want to go ahead and uh, get rid of the weakness to the Ghost. It turns out hey, now it's fine because I can just hit it neutrally anyway. I do at least connect on the Gunk Shot. However, it lives with like 10 HP, which is annoying. But as they, their only coverage on the Psychic side is most likely just that Future Sight. Gengar at least doesn't have to be worried for the future now. We're more living in the present out here as Gengar is just bobbing around, chilling. And then the, the poison actually does take care of the Slow King. So that feels pretty good. And at this point, they've got two Pokemon left. It's going to, of course, be the Glamora. And then they also have the Staraptor. As they bring in the Staraptor, this fella is a problem. It comes in. Obviously, it does take a little bit of Stealth Rock chip. It reveals it is going to be Intimidate. And if it is not Choice Scarf, I am going to be faster, but I imagine it's got to be Scarf. And basically, at this point, I've been trying to conserve the Quagsire for this physical threat. Um, this team kind of struggles with things that aren't affected by the Sticky Web, but at least I do have fully defensive Quagsire. I don't want to switch directly into it because I kind of want to limit the amount of attacks you know, Quagsire has to take. So I just decided to go into the Tinkaton here, and it turns out they're going to go for that Brave Bird. So they locked themselves into Brave Bird. Most likely, it's going to be Scarf. And I'm kind of just here as a sack switch anyway, just to be able to bring in the Sire essentially for free. So one more Brave Bird does take care of old MC Hammer over here. And at that point, it's at least going to open the door for the safe, the safest possible switch into my one fella who can at least handle pretty much any attack this thing wants to throw at me, barring crits. So I now go into the Quagsire, and obviously the only attack I can throw at this thing is going to be a Surf, which... It's a mixed attacking Quagsire, and he doesn't have the best special kind of offense, so it's not likely going to kill. But they also have to take recoil from the Brave Bird, which gives me a little bit of an edge here. And they actually decide to switch. They're going to go into the Glamora here, probably thinking I go for the Toxic, um, not having anything to hit it with. But they saw the Surf earlier, but this thing comes in, takes some Sticky Web, gets all tangled up, and then just dies to a Surf. So we open our mouths and throw the water out, but then ride it to him. So that's just going to take care of the Glamora. And now, final Pokemon is going to be the Staraptor. I was honestly kind of hoping that they were going to leave the Glamora for the Clydesir to come back in and kill later, but it's fine. The Staraptor is still the main problem here, but once again, I do still have the physical wall that I've been you know, conserving for this exact situation. It does have to come in and take more Stealth Rock, 
And if it wants to go for Brave Bird, it's gonna just have to take Chip, and I can definitely take one of them and then throw some water at him. So all I have to do is click the Surf. Turns out they're actually just gonna go for the close combat, and that is, it just bounces off us. Quagsire is just so unaware that he didn't even know we got punched by a freaking crazy bird over there. So a Surf is gonna take care of it, and that is going to be the end of the game. So I thought that was just a fun match. This team is pretty interesting to play with. There's a lot of, a lot of very fun threats working around it. And uh, with that, that's going to bring us into game number two. So let me start this one off by saying this is a really good match. It was a really fun one, and it came right down to the wire against a very scary team that uh, is played super well. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so this time my dude's gonna go ahead and lead off with the Neuvern. Now, as a lead, I imagine it's probably just a fast pivot. And as I go with the Galvangela, I'm kind of an obvious sticky web lead here. So I imagine they probably just wanna pivot out here in the process breaking my Focus Sash, but I'm gonna set up my sticky web regardless. Unless this is like a defog Neuvern, it seems like they don't have the greatest of hazard control. And that's one way that we can kind of capitalize on some weaknesses on the opponent squad. So they do just decide to go for that U-turn does do a little bit of damage, most importantly breaks the Focus Sash, and in comes the big ol' Hungry Hippo who sends sand out of his friggin' back nostrils, and this thing's a little bit of an issue here. Now, I don't have, I imagine they probably just want to go for the Stealth Rock, so the way I'm going to take advantage of that is just going for an Energy Ball to kind of, yeah, first of all, scout how much damage it's going to do, tells me a little bit about how this thing is built, but any bit of chip on the walls, as long as this thing doesn't have, like, slack off, is just going to be pretty helpful. So, they do set up the Stealth Rock, and that is mostly fine. So Gavantula has a couple different options here. Either I can predict a switch, I can stay and go for another energy ball and chip it down to really low. That's what I decided to do. I'm like, you know, I'm just gonna get some more damage here, but they know that's likely coming, and they're actually gonna go ahead and make the switch here into the one thing that I was kind of worried about, and that is gonna be Gudra. So they have the Hisui and Gudra here. If they switch it into an energy ball, that means that Buddy is in fact gonna be working with the Sap Sipper, and that's what happens. You get sipped the hell out of my energy ball, and uh, sip, sipping balls out here gives him a nice little attack boost. Probably doesn't matter, but then again, we don't really know what this Gudra wants to do. Immediately when I see a Hisui and Gudra, I'm thinking shelter and body press. This is kind of what it seems like it's most popular, so I decided to just go into Quagsire. So this Quagsire, his role on this team is to kind of stop offensive setup in the way of being unaware. So they actually end up going for the Acid Spray, and that gives you a harsh defense, or especially defensive drop, which is not ideal. But what it does do is tells me that it's not going to be the type of Gudra we we're thinking it is, and it's going to be a special attacker. So I just decided to go for the Stealth Rock here, thinking they probably switch out, fearing something like an Earthquake. Um, but in, in general, the, the Stealth Rock is just going to be really nice to kind of limit switching regardless. So they actually now just end up going for the Surf, which means dude has massive balls. A lot of the time, this thing could be a water-absorbed Quagsire. Uh, but they predicted the unaware there, and the Surf does do a whole bunch of damage, especially because I got those uh, those special defensive drops. So, at this point, I'm just going to go for the Earthquake, get some damage off on the Felic. Quagsire is kind of used up at this point, not having a whole lot of health. And uh, an Earthquake does do around half, which is honestly pretty good value. And a Surf, one more of them, is going to take care of the Quagsire. So, we got a wet Quagsire now in the grave. But I did get a revenge switch into whatever I'm looking for here. So I decided to go into the Scyther. That's just because you know, I kind of threatened this thing out with a close combat. If I switch this in, it, it just means I have the close combat coverage. So I'm thinking maybe I can catch him on a switch here and get a free Swords Dance. So as I go ahead and make my Sharp Boy even sharper, they actually end up staying in, which is not ideal, as they do have the Thunderbolt. Not quite going to be enough to kill me, but it is going to put Scyther in range to now where I'm not going to be able to deal with a Lycanroc Accelerock in the back, but at least I can now just go for the close combat, finish off the Gudra, which is always a damn good sight to see, and sadly, the Scyther Sweep is not likely going to happen. It was kind of worth it for me to just roll the dice there and see how they want to react to the Scyther, um, get the Swords Dance up, but now they can just freely go into the Lycanroc, obviously threaten the hell out of me with an Accelerock, but the reason why I'm also not super worried about Lycanroc coming in is because I can just go right into a pretty good defensive check in the form of the Sandaconda. So I have the young Pretzel Snake on this squad. And let me, th this thing is a freaking monster. It, it can come in pretty freely on a Lycanroc and uh, just look like a damn shotgun out here. So we come in all coiled the hell up. They do go for the Accelerock here. Uh, kind of just the obvious play. It doesn't do anything to us. But what it does do is reveals this thing's gonna be Life Orb. It's not gonna be like a Sash set with like Endeavor. And now I'm relatively free to go for a Coil, which is exactly what I'm gonna do. We're already looking pretty damn coiled up. We're going to coil ourselves 
even further. So they decided to now bring in the Hippowdon, who is going to get caught up in some webs, but also make it sandy, which obviously Sandaconda does not give a damn about. Um, but it also is going to be a nice little opportunity for me to set up on this thing. Now, if they go into the Hippowdon versus this, honestly, I always see this in fear, like Roar or Whirlwind or whatever the hell type of phasing these things do. But I do at least get my coil up, and I'm thinking at plus one, there is a shot that an Earthquake does a lot. I don't really want to go for the Terra Dragon and go for the Scale Shot quite yet, because I figure Earthquake might kill, but it lives it with just a nice little sliver of health. Allows him to roar me out, getting rid of my boosts, and just dragging in something random. So, that is unfortunate, but what is good is at least the Clytzer comes in, and the Claw is always looking scary, especially when the webs are set up. So, I'm basically free to come in here, get a little bit of pocket sand in my eyes, but more importantly, threaten this thing out with pretty much anything. Is it just barely hanging on by a thread there? And I just decided to go for the Dragon Pulse. So the reason why I do that is because I'm actually choice specs on this Clydeser. This time, with all that extra damage being locked into Dragon Pulse means that when they go into Noivern, I know I can take one attack from it, and then I can just Dragon Pulse it in return to grab a nice little knockout. So, I do take some Sandstorm Chip. It's looking like I'm still relatively in range to maybe take an attack from Noivern, but they actually decide to go right back into the Rock Doggo. So, as this thing comes in, it's kind of an interesting matchup as it threatens me with an Acceleroc, but I really want to kind of keep as much health uh, that I can on the Clydeser at this point, so I'm kind of free to just go right into the Sandaconda here. Now, there's a couple things that this thing could click here, but I just figure Sandaconda can take two of kind of whatever. So I bring back in the Pretzel, and he's like, hey, this seems like a pretty chill time to be a Pretzel Snake, but instead, they actually end up busting out the Terra here, so kind of... An interesting Terra in terms of whatever they're going to go ahead and click versus that Kalyitzer matchup. But now with the Santa Conde, and it turns out to be the Terra, the Stellar Terra, which is not something you see often, but that's going to give you a one time boost on each one of your attacks. Turns out they go for the close combat, and with that Stellar boost, definitely going to be a two hit KO here on the Santa Conde, as that is, uh, that, that's, that's going to hurt. Being punched by a rock dog sometimes is not all that fun. So. At least I am happy to see that they committed the Terra there. It, it does kind of ruin the potential for the Sandaconda sweep in the back. As one more close combat is going to do it there. The Life Orb stacking up a bit. And this thing's you know, going to be at around half health. But down goes the Sandy little fella. And uh, Stellar Dog is honestly pretty damn sick. So we know that this thing has the freaking priority with Accelerock that limits kind of anything I can switch into here. But then I'm looking at it and I'm like, you know what? Gengar can probably take at least one attack here, and I, if they don't Accelerock, I'm actually going to be faster. So, I bring in the Gengar. Again, we are physical Gengar, which is just ridiculous. But, I do actually outspeed. They don't go for the priority, and we can just go ahead and take his Life Orb off him, and then just beat the devil out of him with it, and that is going to take care of the Lycanroc. So, with that, that takes care of a pretty big threat, but also the, the Terra, which is always nice. And most importantly, just them not having that option for the Accelerock is just good you know, for my uh, two frail boys in the back. So, now they can switch and do whatever they like as they decide to go into Gastrodon. Now, Gastrodon is a bit of a problem. I do still have the Galvantula with the Energy Ball in the back. But as I'm looking at it, I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to go for a Poltergeist here, get some chip. Gengar doesn't look super useful for me uh, in the late game here. So, the Poltergeist is going to get a nice little bit of damage there. And it turns out they do just Earth Power to take care of the Gengar. So I was mostly just worried about going into Galvantula and then not getting the value out of it if they uh, either double switched or made a nice prediction. But Gengar going down isn't the end of the world for me here because that's going to open the door to just go right into the, uh, the spider with the powers of the energy ball. So Killabite is ready to do some killing and also potentially some biting depending on what you're into. But I'm just going to go ahead and throw a nice little ball of energy at the guy. And actually just stay in here, which is fantastic. So that's going to kill the Gastrodon, and that thing is just always annoying. And one of the great sights to see in taking care of the bulky slug. So here's the situation. They have two Pokemon left. First of all, going to be the Noivern, who is unaffected by the Sticky Web. But also, there is a Annihilate in the back. So looking at this matchup, I cannot really switch here. And I figure it's kind of going to be nice to see what they go for, as it's going to be the Air Slash that is going to take care of the Galvantula. But... Knowing that a lot of Noiverns have the potential to be choice specs, there is a situation in that uh, they can't really click something stronger like a Draco Meteor here. So, I'm going to bring in Big Meaty Claws. And Clydeser comes in, I do obviously take a little bit of Stealth Rock Chip, but looking at this matchup, if it's going to be a choice specs at Noivern, I should be able to live 
one air slash barring a flinch so i go for the dragon pulse they do outspeed with that air slash it does do a ton of damage revealing it's going to be choice specs but doesn't quite knock me out and then a dragon pulse is going to finish off the noivern so extremely clutch in being able to a live it but also not get flinched and now we have ourselves a good old mexican standoff versus one of the scariest mons to fight in the game being the annihilate but the good thing is as it comes in, gets tied up in the sticky web, I am going to be faster. And with this thing at full HP, it's a pretty scary fella. But what is even more scary is a Terra Dragon boosted. Dragon Pulse with the Mega Launcher. I'm sure that this should have enough to kill. And also, we should definitely be faster barring this thing being Choice Scarf. So, I bust out the Terra Dragon here. And you already know Clariter is about to absolutely do some ripping and tearing. I do outspeed and a Dragon Pulse with that Terra boost. Is it going to be enough? It is. That's going to be a deadass Annihilate and that was a crazy late game. Honestly, Neuvern being choice specs came in extremely clutch for us because of Draco Meteor. They couldn't click it for Scavantula to get the drops and just super clutch. So that is going to be the end of the game on that one. Pretty well played and just all around a good time. So we're not quite stopping there as I do have one more bonus match for you. Listen, if you've made it this far into the video, go ahead and hit that like button for me. For it really does help out the channel in the reach of the video and I would appreciate it if you could click it. And this time we have once again a very scary matchup here with some kind of interesting dynamics here. So let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, so my opponent is gonna go ahead and lead off with the Blood Moon Ursaluna. Very scary bear to be seeing this early. And I'm like, well, my little spider He's actually not afraid to know bears. I'm like, I have the Focus Sash. If they want to just go for that Blood Moon, I, I feel like that's kind of fine. I'm just going to set up my Sticky Web regardless. And while they do have a Rapid Spinner in the form of the Excadrill in the back, I do have the ability to switch into Gengar and block it. So I'm going to go for the Sticky Web here as they actually decide they're going to save the bear for later. Now they do bring in the Excadrill. So this is a little emo mole fella who has the potential to just come in pretty easily here and then just go for a Rapid Spin and then make my spiders day a whole lot worse so if they go into the excadrill here obviously they know that the sticky web is coming and also this being the only form of hazard control i'm like well the earthquake could be bad but also surely they're gonna go for a rapid spin here so i decide to go into the gengar and gengar kind of has a weird matchup because i can't really hit this thing in return and as i do bring in the spooky boy it turns out they're actually just gonna go for a swords dance and that is not the sight you want to see because Excadrill now with the boost is just, just not ideal. So, obviously, knowing that I'm going to be at least faster, one way that I can kind of limit what this fella can do is by going for the trick. I'm going to end up giving this thing a choice band, and it's going to make it hit extremely hard, obviously, but as I give it the choice band, now it has the Swords Dance, and I end up getting its Focus Sash, which is kind of hilarious, because now they go for the Rock Tomb. That is going to knock me down to my Sash, and the bad news about Rock Tomb, it gives me a speed drop. So I'm like... Rock Tomb is a bold move to click there because I would have gone for the Earthquake, but now I'm in a situation where at minus one speed, I'm going to be slower than the freaking guy. But the main goal in this play was just trying to stop this thing from having the ability to get rid of my Sticky Web. I wanted to just trick it into being able to go for an attack and then it can't Rapid Spin. But now I'm as, look, as I'm looking at it, I'm like, well, this Gengar is kind of just hoed at this point, And I just let him go for another Rock Tomb. Does outspeed. And down goes the Gengar. So I've got myself a very dangerous mole on their side. And as I'm looking at it, at least the one good situation is that A, Quagsire has a good matchup. But then also, Pretzel Snake kind of has a pretty decent opportunity here. Now it is Sword Stance, it is Choice Banded, but it's locked into Rock Tomb. And it's like, how scary can that be? So I kind of have a free opportunity to go for a nice little coil here. At least in my head, it feels like this has a pretty high potential payout play. So... They go for the Rock Tomb here. It's not going to do much damage, but what it does do is gives me a speed drop, of course, which is guaranteed. Um, but I can go for the Coil, which now gives me an attack boost along with a defensive boost. And now I know that it's like, okay, they can't really do much with Rock Tombs, but I do just need to maintain health on the Sandaconda. So I'm like, well, as much as I want to set up more, I, I can't really risk being even slower than them whenever they come in on Sticky Webs. And then it's just like, Scale Shots are only going to give me so much speed. And I'm like, well, I might as well just kind of neutralize the threat of this damn Excadrill and just go for an Earthquake, which that is exactly what I'm going to do because the drill is scary. And I wanted to go for Scale Shots to at least get my speed back up, but then it just ends up dropping my defense and I know it's not going to be able to kill the drill. So I just go for that Earthquake and I still at least have myself in a situation where I'm relatively you know, healthy enough to potentially take attacks. At least with plus one defense, I'm good on the physical side. 
And with the Excadrill gone, there's surely no way they can rapid spin now, which is kind of the most important thing. Now, one bad situation about going for sticky webs on a team that has a superior is contrary kinda hose you. Ends up getting a speed boost instead. But here's the thing, I was kind of worried about this play, but all I need to do is go for the Terra Dragon, knowing that they're surely gonna go for the Leaf Storm. I can go ahead, turn myself into a dragon here, and be able to resist the Leaf Storm, and then uh, also have the nice little boost on my scale shot now at plus one. So they do obviously outspeed, they go for that Leaf Storm, and I just barely hang on. I was like, hopefully I live this. I do end up living it with 13, which is amazing. And also, I do connect on the scale shot. So I'm plus one, I'm Terra Dragon, and it also just doesn't do very much damage. I end up getting a crit on the second one. I'm like, well, five hits, potentially clutch. And as I get it down below half, it actually ends up having a citrus berry, which I'm like, who the hell uses citrus berry on a superior? Which is just, it's just so annoying because as I hit four times, it is still in fact alive. And while I do get the speed boost out of it, I'm just gonna be back down to what, like neutral speed and this thing got a boost. And I'm like, well shit, the Sandaconda has ended up not working out here. So they do finish me off with a Terra Blast here. If I were them, I probably would have just clicked the Leaf Storm to get an extra special attack boost. But that's going to take care of the Sandaconda. And now I have myself the threat of a boosted superior with speed and special attack. And this thing is scary as hell. But why I'm not that worried is because they were not able to set up the Stealth Rock, meaning that I can just go into the Garvantula, who is in fact Focus Sash wielding, and I don't have to worry about being knocked out. And then I can just end up revenge killing it at least with a Bug Buzz here. So I go into the Buggy Boy, I look feeling electric and spidery, and they're just going to end up going for the Terra Blast. They don't have anything to hit me on the neutral side at least, or they don't go for the Terra Fire Terra Blast. But it doesn't really matter anyway because I can just kill it with the Bug Buzz and they probably know that I'm Focus Ash anyway. So the Contrary Superior being gone is great because again that thing was faster than everything if it comes in on uh, Sticky Web. And this now allows the opportunity for them to go into Dragonite. So Dragonite is kind of a weird threat for my team here. While I can just go for the Thunder, it turns out they do not extreme speed. I am able to at least break the multi-scale, but the problem is that means they're definitely clicking Dragon Dance. And a boosted Dragonite is a whole lot more scary, and obviously they're going to have the extreme speed because every damn Dragonite in the world does, and now they can just knock me out with priority. So the extreme speed does finish me off, but Galvantula pretty much did what it needed to do. I got my sticky webs up and just stirred them, some things up a little bit also. So I'm down to half of my team left, and Quagsire with the Unaware is honestly the perfect answer for this, but it's actually it's not that perfect because... While I'm not worried about this thing's boots, boosts, I'm also physically defensive, it can't really hurt me. I also can't really hurt it. And the best thing I can do is go for Toxic. So it actually reveals they're going to go for the scale shot here, meaning it's probably going to be loaded dice. And if it does hit five times, it does do a nice little chunk, but it is at least going to allow me, you know, to get off a Toxic. And this is when I really wish that I was carrying, or if I was like had the Ice Beam coverage. But see, while I am a decent answer being unaware, I, again, I just can't do much to it. But Toxic is going to be a little bit of an insurance policy in that now we know for sure that uh, more than likely I won't be swept by the fella as the Toxic's going to build up. Plus, you know, I have the leftovers and I can take a, a couple more attacks from this. So the Toxic is going to start to do its thing as Quagsire is just chilling here unaware of your dragon dances. And I'm like, well, I can't really do much with Surf, so I'm just gonna go for the Stealth Rock. Uh, it's gonna be super useful when that thing comes in next to just get even that more, much more chip. And they actually decide to switch out. They're gonna end up going into the Golden Go, who does get caught up in the Sticky Web. Bad thing is Quagsire is definitely not gonna be faster even than, you know, a minus one Golden Go. But I do get up that Stealth Rock, which is gonna be pretty helpful for the mid to late game. And at this point, I'm like, you know what? At this health, do I even get knocked out from anything this can throw at me? Hey, freaking Golden Go is kind of a problem, and I know that Clarizer probably can't kill I, this thing at full health. So I just decided to go for the Earthquake. It turns out they're actually going to bust out the trick. And that means that this thing's going to go ahead and give me the Choice Scarf. So now, I am a very speedy Choice Scarfed Quagsire locked into Earthquake. And the good thing is, I get the Earthquake off. Nice little stab. Earthquake is going to do well over half, which makes my life... You know, a much better versus the friggin' string cheese guy. But the downside is I'm, I'm locked into Earthquake, and we know that they have the flying type with the Dragonite back there. So I just decided to go for that Earthquake because it just kind of seems like my safest option as Quagsire is not super useful at this point as long as you know, Dragonite isn't that big of a threat. So I go for the Earthquake here as they're going to go right into the Dragonite. But he is flying around with his wings just flapping slow as hell. He is just floating above it. Now, the Stealth Rock paired with the Toxic here 
puts me in a very unique situation where I'm like, you know, I can't touch this as I'm locked into Earthquake, but like, I, I might as well just stay in here. They go for the scale shot, which actually ends up missing, which is relatively clutch on my end, but uh, Earthquake obviously just doesn't touch him. But then I'm like, I'm just, I'm literally gonna use up my entire Quagsire so that I don't have to worry about this Dragonite being an asshole. I'm just gonna continue to stay in here Going for Earthquakes that are not helping me out at all, other than the fact that every turn that goes by makes it so that this Dragonite is definitely not going to be the threat that they want it to be. So, they do connect on a scale shot at this point, and Quagsire is like, ouch, frick, ouch, stop throwing, stop it. But obviously we live without at least a critical hit. Does hit five times, and then I'm like, yeah, check this shit out. I'm gonna go ahead and Earthquake the, uh, the, the ground that you're floating above, and it doesn't matter because while the next toxic turn doesn't kill, the turn that they do end up knocking out the Quagsire should be able to finish it off. And then we're just absolute stonks, not having to worry about freaking Dragonite here. So all I have to do is just burn one more turn here. They do finish me off with a scale shot. But that is exactly what we needed the Quagsire to do. Honestly, if you ever just need a reliable guy to throw on a squad, Quagsire is a pretty damn good fella to, to put on there. It always just ends up providing a ton of value, especially with Unaware. Having the utility of just blocking setup sweeps is pretty damn nice. So, gets a little speed boost that this thing can enjoy in freaking hell because the poison is going to take care of it. And that is one way of slowly but surely not having to worry about getting swept by a, a setup Dragonite. So, I have two Pokemon left, but the good news is I got big meaty claws on my end where they have uh, pretty much everything that has to worry about the sticky web being up. So, as they decide to go into the Blood Moon, who we haven't seen in a long ass time, Clyde is like, oh hell yeah, this bear looks like freaking breakfast, lunch, and dinner for you boy. And uh, it gets caught up in the sticky web, which doesn't matter. I, I am going to be faster. I can just water purse, water purse? I, I can throw my water purse at him, which is full of watery coins. And uh, they actually end up switching out here. They're going to end up going into the Porygon 2, who is more than likely going to be a specially defensive wall. This thing comes in, but I am a choice specs Clyde with the stab water pulse. With the Mega Launcher, gonna be able to do a bunch of damage regardless. I feel like it's probably a two-hit KO, and I'm just gonna go ahead and see what happens here. So the Water Pulse comes through, pulls the Devil out of him, and I actually end up getting a critical hit, which is extremely clutch. Puts this thing in range to just die from another one, and the Claw is in a great situation here as that takes care of the Rubber Ducky. That thing is always a damn problem, and now it is uh, just gonna be taken care of. So they have two Pokemon left at this point. It's gonna be the Blood Moon along with the Golden Go. So they decide to go into the Golden Go first. This thing does not have its Choice Scarf anymore. It also has to be affected by the Sticky Web. And we've got enough chip on the fella to the point where a Water Pulse definitely takes care of it. And my Lobster Ass is not being Thunderbolted today. So I just pull some water at him that does take care of the Cinnamon is the Winamon. And now it is just one Mon left who we know that we have the coverage on. And the Water Pulse is proving to be not the move you see very often in competitive, but honestly, pretty damn clutch. So, Blood Moon comes in, gets caught in the sticky web for the third time. Buddy is feeling sticky as hell over there like a damn iPad kid. But of course, I can just go for the Water Pulse and knock it out if that's if it was that easy. It turns out they do, in fact, still have the Terra in the back pocket, so they're going to go ahead and use it here. Now, most of the time, these are working with Terra Normal just to boost Blood Moons even further, and that's exactly what it's going to be here. So with the Diamond on its head, no longer Ground-type, I'm like, oh shit, I might end up as a lobster dinner for this fellow because the Water Pulse, even with the specs, is not quite enough to knock it out. It's so incredibly close. Uh, but now I can just go ahead and literally throw the moon at my face, or at least beam the moon at me, and that is going to kill the Clyotzer, which is unfortunate. But I do still have one Mon left, and it is one little buggy fella. And as long as you're faster than Blood Moon, you at least should have a good time. I got enough chip on the thing to where pretty much anything should kill it. And Scyther is once again going to have to come in clutch here as the late game clean up and go ahead and mow some lawns out here because we are the damn mower. And I just can go ahead, close combat the diamond, and that is going to be the end of the match. So I thought that was just another game that was super close and uh, just a fun game in general. This team, once again, is fun and uh, having, a good, having a good time with it. So thank you guys very much for watching. Hopefully you did enjoy, and I will be back soon with some more competitive Mon shenanigans. Peace out.